Hi, welcome back to the Kitchen Table Models Workshop. My name's Ian and this is my modern bench where I get all my gifts built. So, review time again. And this is the last of my birthday purchases, um, which is Eddard's 148 scale A6M2N roof um, float plane. Uh, so it's basically the float, float plane version of the Zero Fighter. Um, a really interesting kit. Um, Obviously, Eddard has released a whole new range of Zero Fighters, um, which is great. Um, and I actually have reviewed, um, if you've already seen it, um, the new tooled uh, Zero Fighter from Academy. Um, but just looking at this something different, a float plane, I thought it would be really, really nice to pick this one up. Just a completely different version of the aircraft, not one I've seen very much of model some of the other float planes available but not the zero version so i thought yeah i'll take a take a punt on this kit and have a look um and i thought if i'm having a look at it i may as well show you guys and we'll see what's in the box and what we think of it now bearing in mind it's eddard they've got a really really good reputation of producing very very detailed um, 148 scale kits 172 second scale kits and they have a good range of 130 second scale kits so Already, we've probably got quite high expectations. This is going to be a well put together kit, um, but you never know. Um, I can't think it's going to be an awful kit, but it might be a complicated kit. I've not looked in the box yet, so what I see is first time is what you guys are going to see. Um, but an interesting kit all the same, and just something different, um, something to spark up the model in mojo and, and yeah, get you interested in the hobby. So really enough waffling for me let's get the camera on the table and we'll see what we've got in the box so on the table and first off box art what an iconic picture um i know i always talk about box art um and sometimes it's not so inspiring but this this is really really inspiring now this is a profi pack edition um so i'm not sure just if, if there's going to be many extras in it but just looking at the picture, this to me, this is what sold this kit to me, um, and I wanted to buy it. Um, an iconic photograph of, um, I'm assuming that's P40 Warhawks um, in the uh, Indochina area, fighting off the Zero float plane. Kind of an uneven match, really, because I can't imagine the floats would have improved the aerodynamics of the aircraft. But yeah, a really, really iconic picture. So yeah that's what sells a picture sometimes a picture sells you and makes you interested and definitely um, eddard's knocked it out of the park for this one so it is the a6m2n roof and 148 scale from eddard and it is kit number 82219 now if you look at the side of the box you've obviously got the address profi pack edition there's a little bit of blurb in english and check uh, if we look on the ends uh, just a repeat of the uh, top with the information and the barcode and if we look on the reverse side then we've actually got the color schemes now there are five different uh, marking um, variances here which is really quite good um, you've got a classic um, IJN light gray and then you've got the dark green over gray and then you've got like a very mottled worn dark green over gray um, which would be really quite a nice one to do if you're into your weathered aircraft because that would obviously be quite a weathered aircraft um, and they're ranging from aircraft ranging from September 1942 right through till um, 1944 so that's a good span of the uh, Pacific conflict so if we lift the lid off a nice top opening box good stout box as well Ed I really do make nice boxes um, we can see there's quite a good bit of stuff in here um, we've got one uh, two bags of grey sprues a clear sprue and then underneath that we have we've got the decals we've got some die cut masks and a little bit of photo etch so profi packs obviously you've got a little bit extra um, just to detail up the aircraft even more so let's do what we usually do we'll set the plastics to one side and we'll start with the instructions to see what we've got so there's the instructions I'll maybe just zoom it in just a tiny touch and see if we can focus so anybody that wants to stop frame and read them you can but 
all the blurb there about the aircraft, the markings and colorings. And then the inside, I'll just zoom you back. I oh, know you should be able to see most of that. So we've got parts layout. We've got a color call outs here. And then we go straight into um, part one of the build. So um, we've got detail going into the inside of the fuselage. Got some photo etch work straight away. We've got more detail going into the reverse side of the fuselage. Um, some detail to be removed so we can replace it with PE. So that's an option. You can leave it if you want or you can replace it with a photo etch. And same again here. You can remove some of this detail and replace it with a photo etch or you can paint it up. The option is yours as the modeler, which is really good actually. It'll be interesting to see what like the parts are when we get to them. So that moves through. We've got uh, trim wheels, throttle quadrants, um, and a nice plan lay of, uh, layout of where they go. And then we move on to um, A and B. So A is your pedal assembly. And again, you've got the option of putting your photo etch in or leaving it as plastic. And then B, we're moving on to the seat where we've got a photo etch harnesses, which is really, really nice to see. And then we've got the seat frame onto the rear bulk seat bulkhead. And then there's more photo etch on the side for the adjustment handle for the height. Uh, we've got some toggle switches here. Some small switches going on the, f the probably the reverse of the cockpit floor actually. Um, moving on to the cockpit floor, uh, putting in the rudder assembly, uh, the control stick and pedals. And we've got some more radio details here on the side consoles. And then bringing the cockpit side consoles together. And we've got s some more photo etch here for controls on the side consoles. That moving on down, um, we've got the instrument panel um, and we'll probably have some yeah, machine guns. As you obviously the, the breeches of the machine gun were in the front of the cockpit above the instrument panel. Bring it together and possibly some oxygen cyl cylinders as well for the pilot, making a nice little compact cockpit package. Moving over the page, then we are bringing the two fuselage halves together, building the tail, putting the cockpit in, and then we're moving on to the wings. So we've got the main wing spar on the lower wing uh, and then the upper wings. So one piece lower wing, two piece upper wings. And obviously we'll have to do a little bit of painting in here just so any areas visible through the cockpit are painted. Um, we've also got ailerons going on, marker lights going on, and a few more uh, cockpit details going into the floor of the cockpit here. And then we're looking at masks. So we've got wheel masks and we've got cockpit masks. And it looks like... Uh, is there two different types of cockpit? Yeah, I'm not sure if there's interior and exterior masks, but there's certainly a, f a comprehensive mask set, which is really, really nice. Now, obviously, there's going to be no undercarriage on this aircraft. So one less thing to worry about. Uh, horizontal stabilizers and elevators, they're going onto the aircraft. The wings are coming onto the fuselage. Uh, we've got some detail to go on here where the canopy will eventually go over. And then for H, we're moving on to the engine assembly. Engine comes onto the fuselage. We have some bombs down here. That will be underwing stores. And then we have a jig to build the front cowlings which is a nice touch which also means we'll be able to position the front cowlings open if you want to super detail the engine i'm not going to worry about that i'll just be building it all closed up but for those that do it's really nice to have that option and then we'll bring in and uh, we've got some bits to fill here um, for marking c d and e only uh, cowling over the engine and then we're moving on to the main float, center float, and then the wing um, floats. We've also got some ladders and some stays. Underwing bombs going on. Propeller, propeller boss, and the canopy. And then we're bringing it all together. Gun sight, main canopy, or front canopy, rear canopy, sliding canopy going on. Aerial antenna. Um, a few possibly counterweights, is it? 
uh, the wing pitot tube uh, got a couple of cannons going in the wings propeller going on and then the final bit of the construction is the beaching trolley for the aircraft so if you wanted you're going to display it in a little vignette floating in the water or you can build it onto the beaching trolley if you want to have it in maintenance so it's really nice to have that option and then we've got uh, a couple of diagrams of how it all goes together once the build is finished we're moving on to the painting options so we've got Aleutians 1943 and you can see here we've got some possibilities for wear so we've got a light dark, a light coat of dark green over the initial IGN grey which is quite a nice option I might end up going for something like that um, we've got the classic IGN dark grey so that's um, Kami Kawa Maru Shortland September 1942 so it's quite early on in the war We've got um, Shoreland Islands, February 1943. Uh, we have a Japan aircraft, 1944, and this one looks amazing uh, for air, 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 hairspray weathering, where the, the, light, the dark green coat is worn away to show the light grey underneath, so that's a really interesting option, even down to the fact you've got some red oxide primer underneath the gray light gray coat and then we've got from 1944 a base in japan interesting to note that the tail fin is a slightly different color from the rest of the overall green so yeah we've got quite a good wide option of markings there for anyone that's interested in building this and then the last page is the uh, stencil placements so really nice comprehensive instructions as always with edard you just don't expect anything other so I won't get these out of the packet, but we will get them as close to the camera so you can see the photo etch. Edard, we all know what light they are. They're very good, high quality photo etch, and they've just gotten better and better over the years. Um, this is no exception. So if you want to use this to detail up the uh, aircraft cockpit a bit more, you're not going to be disappointed. And again, their die cut masks are really, really good. So there's no point in getting them out to have a look at. You know they're going to work. Edard decals. I've heard a lot of folk saying about them, new new style LED decals, and the fact that the carrier film can come away from them and they're really hard to work with. I'll be quite honest, I haven't built a brand new LED kit for a long, long time, so I don't actually know how good or bad these decals are, but I'll just be working with them my usual way um, with um, Micro Industries, Micro Set, Micro Sol, and we'll see how they are. But they're nice and matte, the stencil decals. The carrier film doesn't look to be anything oversized as, as you'd need. Um, so you should minimize silvering. And the main decals, so we've got the nice um, Japanese marking. They're all in register. Again, nicely matte in color. Uh, minimal carrier film. I think they'll go down quite nicely. And we've also got cockpit de de decals there for the instrument panels if you choose to use them so yeah overall quite nice um, again don't know if they're good or bad but we'll obviously get around to seeing that when I get around to building this one right now onto the fun parts the plastic uh, cockpit glass is here first and it's in a resealable bag which is really nice um, right what we're going to say we have got couple of different options for the cockpit glaze in here so we've obviously got two of everything so it might be earlier and later models some very very fine details the glass is crystal clear the framing is beautiful you can see that so it's going to be no problem getting your masks attached to it and it's going to be no problem painting it and it's got a slightly matte finish on the framing so your paint's going to adhere really nicely and there is framing detail on the inside as well if you choose to paint the inside so all in all a lovely lovely um, set of gla um, glazings clear plastics there which is what you expect from Eddard you know they are getting to be a well well respected company and they're producing high quality model kits so anything less you'd be very disappointed right so we're going to start with the bag that's got three sprues in it nicely packed they're not going to slide around on each other 
um, starting with the sprue that contains the main float. Now, when I when I looked at the um, there we go, there's a nice plan view of the sprue. When I looked at the Academy Zero, I was really impressed with the rivet detail and panel lining on the kit. And Eddard hasn't disappointed. In fact, it's probably marginally better. You can see that in the light. Beautiful, beautifully fine engraved panel lines and rivet lines all um, there for the modeler. It's going to take a wash beautifully. You're obviously going to have very fine paintwork. If you flood it with paint, you're going to lose all this detail, but beautiful detail. Crisp, clean molding. It's a nice, crisp, sharp plastic. If you do the old drop test, you can hear it's 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 not soft and bendy like the Academy one was, or even the ICM kits. Um, it's a really it's sort of a Tami esque or a Hasegawa esque type plastic, uh, so it's going to go together really nicely. There's very little flash and there's very little burring. If you look down on these parts here for the struts, there's no burring on them at all. So that's a nice sprue. Um, if we move on to this sprue here, we've got. We've got the lower portion of the main float. Again, beautiful rivet detail on it. I think you can pick that out in the light. And um, we've got some of the cockpit detailing here. The framing, we've got a propeller. We've got frames for the beaching gear. Um, we've got part of the rudder surface and we can see the, the surface detail on there. And the ribbon, beautiful. Minimal ejector pin marks. If they are there, they're in places that are going to be removed or they won't be seen. Um, so, yeah, stunning, stunning stuff. Next sprue is um, the rest of the cockpit and the engine and parts of the wheel well. So, now, um, we won't be using any of these, but we might use them structurally to um, set the dihedral on the wing. But you won't actually see any. The engine detail itself is beautiful. You can see... The uh, cooling vanes on the engine, as it's an air-cooled radial, are lovely. Um, a dry brush and a dark wash will bring that detail out beautifully. We've got the cockpit floor. It's really, really nice. And then we've got another framing, all hollowed out. Absolutely stunning. We've got the uh, either push rods or the ignition circuit for the engine, which is lovely and fine. And there's no burring on that, so minimal cleanup. Very, very fine attachment points as well. We've got all the cockpit sundries, uh, parts of the side panel there. If we can make sure that focuses, there we go. Um, we've got some of the cockpit stuff there, the radio panels. Machine guns are a bit bland, but you're not actually going to see them, so it doesn't matter. And there's the instrument panel, which again, it's a bit bland. However, it's nothing that can't be. Um, brought to life if there's foot wedge there I didn't actually notice if there was a foot wedge replacement but all in all it's really really nice quality mouldings just what you'd expect from Eddard really right let me just pop those together move them to one side so the last bag and it contains two sprues and these are the ones we've all been waiting for these are We'll go for the main wings first. So you've got the lower one piece wings and the two upper piece wings, two piece upper. Again, absolutely stunning, stunning fine rivet detail. It's all in keeping with the detail as we've seen on the floats. And I should imagine the same for the fuselage. And Eddard is renowned for producing beautifully detailed, uh, surface detailed models. And the upper wings are exactly the same as the lower. You've got the horizontal um, elevators here. And then you've got the ailerons here. And they're all absolutely stunning. And no ejector pin marks anywhere within the kit. We've got some very fine locating pins. Shouldn't be a problem. Um... We've got some sprue attachment points on the main surfaces. That doesn't bother me. It just means you've got to be a little bit careful on the cleanup. But overall, these parts are stunning. I mean, really stunning. Quite impressed. Quite, quite impressed with Eddard. 
And then we move on to the final sprue, which has got the fuselage halves. And if we look at them, you can see that reflected in the light. The detail is absolutely stunning. So if we have a plan view of this, we've got the two fuselage halves. We've got the one piece, oh no, two piece horizontal stabilizers to come together. And we've got the engine cowlings, um, the upper engine cowling. We've got the mold um, or the frame um, for the bringing them all together. And then there's the, sorry, that'll be the lower engine cowling. And this will be the upper engine cowling where the machine guns protrude through. And I think this will be the exhaust stacks here that are nicely sort of semi-hollowed. Yeah, stunning. Really, really impressed. Oh, I should have looked on the inside. Hold on. There we go. There's the inside detail. Now, unlike the Academy kit that had one or two ejector pins that were in amongst the detail, there's none in anywhere that you're going to see in this kit. So, Eddard learning the lessons of other manufacturers' failings, but... To, to say our academies as a failing is a bit of an overstatement. They're marginally in the way, whereas these obviously nowhere near. So top marks to Eddard. Okay, well, that's all the parts. So I'm going to put them back in the box and then we'll get the camera back up off the table and we'll have some thoughts. So there we go. Eddard's A6M2N roof um, float plane. Uh, so basically the, the, the zero float plane version. Um, thoughts? Wow. Uh, I know I say this often, but this really is a beautiful model. Um, the plastic's really good quality. The detail's really fine and complete. Uh, the interior's well appointed. You can choose to build it with or without the photo etch. Either way, you're gonna get a very nicely detailed model. Um, and you've got enough marking options in the box to satisfy most models, I would think. You can either go for a pristine, um, either early war, light, um, grey, uh, IGN grey aircraft, or you can go for a late war, beaten up aircraft where the dark over colours peeling off and you're getting this worn um, grey surface underneath. Or you could go for a nice sort of pristine, dark green over grey aircraft. You know, the options are quite endless you know you've also got the option with the landing the, the beach and trolley where you could do an aircraft in maintenance on land or you could do a diorama where it's been pulled up a pier or you could just you know not bother with it and do a little vignette of it floating at anchor you know again options are endless so a fantastic fantastic uh, release from Eddard and I really think it's it's kind of plugged the gap in the market because a lot of the um Imperial Japanese Navy float planes from that era are older toolings, say from the, the 90s or the noughties, so they don't have the level of detail that this kit has. So this is really bringing that whole genre, dragging, <laughs> dragging it into the, the new model in age, as you might say, uh, and, and giving the modeler a fantastic model to build that's going to be a really, really eye-catching piece on the display shelf. So... Um, yeah, really, really impressed with this kit. Um, so the obvious question is, would I buy it? Well, I did. <laughs> would I recommend it? Yes, I would. It's not very expensive. It's probably around about the sort of £35 mark. Um, you can shop around. Um, so for the, for the amount of money you spend and for what you get in the box, it's really, really worth it. Um, and I highly recommend it. Being Eddard, it's probably going to go together really well. Um, I've built quite a few Eddard kits and yeah, they can be a little complicated, but they all go together well and they all finish beautifully. So definitely a recommended kit from me and I will be building this not in the near future. It's going to go into my stash and mature nicely and I'll probably build it when I'm, I'm needing that lift um, of a different subject to build. So that's the, that's the review. Um, if you have any comments or questions, please put them down below. I always take time to read them and I will respond. Thank you if you've watched this far, and if you have watched this far, please consider subscribing. It does help grow the channel, and I'm very, very grateful for all the subscribers I've got so far. Um, and any until next time, happy modeling, guys, and take care.